Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters. Get ready to create magic and miracles as you lean into your heart's desires. I believe not only does the heart want what it wants, but it knows. This show is a weekly deep dive into what it means to live from an awakened heart. I'll be sharing inspiring stories and real conversations with people just like you who have turned the ordinary into the extraordinary. My mission is to show you how you too can be connected and heart-centered in every area of your life. Your journey to aligning with more love, more joy, and your wildest dreams come true starts now. Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Walters, and here we are, February 2021. And today's guest is, I'm so excited to have her on, Bonnie Howard. And we're going to address people that have chronic illnesses and really giving a lot of motivation and hope that you're just not limited to what your diagnosis is. Over 60% of adults in the United States have some type of chronic disease. Some people even have two types of chronic diseases and more. Since this type of ailment drastically affects one's quality of life, it's important to both overcome and prevent chronic illness as effectively as you can. Not everyone knows how to go about it, though. Chronic disease can make life seem difficult or impossible to cope with, but there's hope. Listen in on this podcast and be inspired. Originally from New York, Bonnie moved to Arizona as a child with her parents and her sister. Her love of warmth and sunshine has since made Scottsdale the perfect place to call home. Bonnie's journey through a lifetime of debilitating health issues, trauma, and addiction didn't always make sense to her. Bonnie lived with undiagnosed chronic illness from the time she was a child. Her symptoms were dismissed as hypochondria and anxiety for decades until in her 40s when she became disabled and was diagnosed with dysautonomia, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and mast cell activation disorder. Her ailing health necessitated a variety of surgical and medical interventions, including pacemaker placement, cervical spine surgery, and a full hip replacement. Although Bonnie partook in plenty of traditional schooling, including a master's level education, her most impactful learning has come from falling down and getting back up again. In the search for wellness and meaning, in all she'd been through, Bonnie tirelessly looks for answers. A series of synchronicities led her to lesser-known healing modalities, where she not only found wellness and inner peace, but also her life's purpose, to help others heal. As a podcast host, health coach, speaker, and well-being software consultant, she is determined to use her life experience to help others find healing and happiness. Bonnie believes that when we live in alignment with our highest purpose and values, our health improves exponentially. And here is today's guest, Bonnie Howard. Hi, Bonnie. Welcome to the Awaken Heart Podcast. Thank you, Nancy. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'm so happy to see your smiling face. I don't think it's, it's been about a year since I actually saw you in person in Scottsdale. It was around Christmas That's time, right. right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I remember it was um, actually right after a surgery and I was still using a walker. So yes. that memory stands out pretty clearly for me. Yes. You had just had surgery on your hip, a major surgery, and you are still full of smiles and positivity. And we went out to get what are those called? A smoothie acai bowl. bowls. Yeah, acai we got acai bowls. Acai bowls. Yes. yes. And um, this woman here is just so full of spirit and she's got a smile that just radiates from ear to ear. And there's so much positivity that radiates this woman. Uh, she's been through so much and she's been such an inspiration and a light for so many people who have chronic illnesses. And for those who don't have chronic illnesses like myself, just to be just so inspiring to, you know, move forward and live such a impactful and positive life. And we don't have to be held down by our life circumstances. Absolutely. Why yeah. have I learned that? <laughs> yes. Yes. I would love to hear from you to let our audience know what it is that you were diagnosed with and how it came about. Gosh, so I wish there were an easy answer to that. It's so I've I've kind of had chronic illness issues from the time I was a child, but it was 
dismissed and it was undiagnosed. I saw a number of doctors and, you know, always, of course, share with my family that I wasn't well, I was tired. I had a lot of gastrointestinal issues, uh, lots of aches and pains everywhere. My mother used to call me snap, crackle and pop because I was constantly popping every single joint I could just to relieve the pain temporarily. So that was, that was kind of just the way I grew up and I didn't really understand why that was happening. And then as I got older, I had some really interesting incidents happen. One being that when I was in my early 30s, shortly after I had my child, I wound up needing emergency surgery because I had my right arm just went completely paralyzed and I was in excruciating pain. And when I went to the hospital, they turned me around and they said, oh, you're fine. You just take some codeine. It's just a strain. And then the next day I had an ambulance come to my house because I couldn't even get out of bed. I was in that much pain. And I wound up back at the hospital and they realized, oh, she can't move her arm. It's paralyzed. So they wound up doing, uh, you know, transporting me to the place where they do the spinal surgery. Then I had emergency spinal surgery to correct that. They told me that if I hadn't had it corrected, I would likely have become a quadriplegic at some point in my life. So that was a little scary. And yet nobody understood the why behind that. It, it made no sense. They, they hadn't, they did not have an explanation for why that happened. It wasn't after a sudden accident or any, there was nothing that made sense about it. So then my life went on and on and on. And, you know, I, I've always been kind of a go-getter, very much of a type A person, which I'm working on not being that person anymore. I, I like my life a little bit more relaxed now. And I found that that's actually very healing, which I'll get into later. But when I was in my 40s, I was, you know, I was in the corporate workplace. I was in corporate really since I was, gosh, in my teens, I, I worked really, really hard. And I was in the financial business and I was doing a lot of um, work in a very intense, fast paced environment. And I just kept feeling worse and worse and worse. And I... It got to the point where I had to be driven home by security several times because I was so dizzy and disoriented. I thought I was going to pass out on the job. I was having like these, what felt like a panic attack, but it was like I couldn't breathe and crazy, you know, headaches so bad I couldn't see the computer screen, just, just a whole bunch of a myriad of things. And eventually, after going to probably about 10 different specialists, I got diagnosed with a couple of different things. One was a neurological condition called dysautonomia, which is a dysregulation of the autonomic nervous system. It's basically, it affects all the things that we expect to happen naturally, like our breathing and our blood pressure and our heart rate and our sight, all of these things that we just kind of take for granted, my mine were broken. So I had very, very low blood pressure, which led to the dizziness and the you know near fainting, sometimes fainting and a uh, very low heart rate, which led to, again, really dizzy, a lot of fatigue, a lot of gastrointestinal problems, just a, a, whole, a whole bunch of things. So I got diagnosed with that. And then shortly after, I think probably about a year or two later, I wound up getting diagnosed with something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which apparently is comorbid, which means it goes together with dysautonomia. So I got diagnosed with that. And gosh, I could probably sit here and, and use our entire time together, just giving you the list of diagnoses. So I won't bore you. But um, just to give you a quick summary, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is a genetic connective tissue disorder. It essentially affects every system of your body. And connective tissue is like the glue that holds our body together and helps all of our organs and everything to work properly. And again, Mine, mine wasn't working properly, so therefore it affected every part of me. And that, that ultimately, that I found out was the reason for why I needed that neck surgery because it really impacts your joints and, um, and ligaments. So gosh, over the years, I've needed a whole bunch of different surgeries and stuff, but the main ones being a pacemaker surgery, a hip replacement, and the spinal surgery, uh, cervical spinal surgery that I spoke of before. Wow. That's a, that's a lot. Did you feel when that doctor finally diagnosed you, was that a relief that there was actually a name to your symptoms, that there was actually something that was in your mind? You weren't all crazy. Nancy, I can't even tell you how relieved I was. It's funny because when I got the diagnosis, people were like, my gosh, are you okay? How do you feel about this? Because they told me it was chronic. It was degenerative. 
you know, my, basically I was kind of doomed. So, you know, that's, that's not, that's not great, great news, right? <laughs> you think I'm fall into a ball and cry, but it was kind of the opposite because I, I knew all my life intuitively, I knew there was something that was very, very wrong, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I'd been called a hypochondriac, you know, people thought I was crazy and nobody understood that what I was experiencing was actually very, very real until I had a doctor that finally paid attention and had the knowledge to, and it's not that doctors weren't paying attention. It was that, you know, these conditions are not that commonly known and they're not, they don't really spend a whole lot of time in them in medical school. Although I think that's now changing. So, you know, just nobody knew what it was. So, you know, they just all thought it was psychosomatic. It's anxiety. It's, you know, it's depression. It's, you know, whatever, You're just a hypochondriac. So when I was finally told, oh, there's a reason for this. You actually have a genetic thing that is making all of these things happen. I was so relieved because I was like, thank God I'm not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of like, see, I told you guys, you know, my family and stuff, like I wasn't making it up all this time. This really was real. So yes, yeah, so it was a relief. Yeah. After all that time to finally have that validation and relief, it's got to be priceless. And uh, I know that, you know, for chronic disorders, diseases, um, there's more than 7,000 of them and that it affects fewer than 200,000 people and people with your disorder, you have, don't you have a support organization for them or, or you're working to bring awareness to it so people don't feel so alone? Yeah, so I there's actually the Ello Stanlow Society, and I actually was honored to have on my podcast the CEO of that society to discuss the conditions to bring more awareness. And whenever I get a chance, I do try to bring more awareness. But beyond that, my focus has kind of changed. I, I now, more than anything, I like to bring awareness to the fact that we are so much more empowered mm. to heal our bodies than what we're told. Yes. So and, and I've been kind of led to that. And, you know, through like you doing the podcast, Nancy and I, you know, we're in the same course where we learned how to create these podcasts. And her podcast right? called Chronically Courageous. And it's one of the top five in the world right now. After less than a year, but top 5%. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you for mentioning that, Nancy. Yes. <laughs> yes. So on my podcast, The Chronically Courageous, I started off by using it as a way to have people share their stories because I knew how bad it felt to have my story not acknowledged, not believed, not heard. And I knew how healing it was when I was able to finally share it and kind of, you know, work through it with people. So that was my initial intent, but it, it was really interesting. I, I believe I was really divinely led to where I am now because as I was having my podcast, I had certain people come to me and say, gosh, you need to have this person on your podcast. Their story is really incredible. And I had this one particular uh, girl on my podcast. Her name's Rachel Barber. And she was the poster child for chronic illness. She had, you know, all, all the things, I mean, different than mine, but you know, chronic illness is very much similar at its root. I mean, it's hard, it's painful, it's exhausting. It's, you know, a lot of hopelessness. And she had gone through this program where she healed herself. And now she's a coach where she helps people to rewire their brains and to heal. So I had her on my podcast and I was like, wow, you know, here was this girl that, you know, she was also told that she wasn't going to heal and she was kind of hopeless. And now she's this vibrant, healthy person that's going on to help other people heal. So I kind of changed the trajectory of my podcast and I started having on more people like that. And I kept hearing more and more of these stories where people had come to heal themselves. And I was like, my gosh, this isn't just a one-time thing. And it's not just a fluke. This, this is, this is seeming very real because these people that I actually had the opportunity to meet had these amazing stories of healing. So I went ahead and I hired myself a, a health coach that had been through this girl's program, through Rachel Barber's program and done the brain rewiring. And I went through a series of, gosh, a whole bunch of coaching around, you know, nutrition and brain rewiring and some supplements and, you know, mindset stuff and trauma healing and inner child healing and all of these different layers and layers of things. And as I was doing it, I just kept feeling more and more empowered and more healthy. And uh, so, you know, I just, I had a, a recent major, major breakthrough, which I have to share. So 
like I said, Nancy and I met a little over a year ago in person and I was, I used to walk her at the time. Nancy was so sweet. She was helping me in and out of the car with my walker and she was so kind and caring. And I was so embarrassed because it was the first time we'd ever met in person. And Not at all. But she, she was so sweet about it. And I was like, my gosh, this isn't me. I've always been, despite my illness, I always pushed myself at the gym. I was the girl in the Stairmaster, you know, sweating like crazy. And, and so anyway, so about, gosh, about a month ago, I was hiking with my fiance and just, just the hiking part alone was great. And we, we'd been doing that for a little bit and I was feeling really good. And I was just like, wow, you know, this is amazing that I could do this again. And just the, the gratitude for being able to do it is just incredible because when you think you'll never be able to accomplish something again, and then you do, it's just, oh, I, I can't explain mm -hmm. how amazing that feels. So we're going down the mountain and all of a sudden I'm like, I remember when I used to run down here, not a lot, because I always had that joint stuff going on and I tried to kind of be careful about it, but I'm like, I wonder if I could do that. And all of a sudden I just started like picked up my feet and I just started running down the mountain and he runs in front of me and he gets out the video camera and he starts filming me and he's like narrating it. And he says, Aww. I've been dating her almost three years. And in that three years, I have never one time seen her run. And, and I just like, and I'm running down the mountain, like Rocky, I have my hands in the air and I'm just like, I'm running. <laughs> and it was just, it was such a magical moment. I think was, I saw that video. Didn't you put it up? I did. I yeah. did. I made a, I made like a montage of, you know, me in a wheelchair, me in a walker mm -hmm. and, you know, kind of like in the hospital hooked up to a bunch of stuff. And then, you know, showing the progression of mm -hmm. me getting to that point of running down the mountain and just to kind of, I like to inspire people so that they know it's possible. This is possible. Like mm -hmm. just because you're in a really dark, horrible, sick place at one moment of your life does not mean that that has to be your story forever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're Rocky. You're the female version. <laughs> right. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> and going back, you mentioned David. So here is this man, like, I just see you so happy. You've got this beautiful relationship. You met three years ago and you had this chronic illness and you didn't know if anyone would really ever be able to, you know, accept you because here I am, you know, I'm ready for love, but you know, you've had other men leave you because they see you like on the floor and not be able to pick yourself up. And then here comes David that accepted you for everything that you are. Can you tell us how that came about and how you met him and how it evolved? Yes. So David is every, every woman's dream. I have a million people that always ask me, you know, is, does he have a brother? You know, where's my David? <laughs> so you, yes. Yours is coming, Nancy. Yours, he's coming. He's coming. Um, so I, so this is, this is kind of a lackluster part of the story, but we met on Tinder of all places, online dating. And it was funny because I had gone off of Tinder because, you know, people were like, oh, it's just a hookup site. And that wasn't what I was looking for at the stage of my life. I wanted something more serious. And I knew that, you know, I mean, for someone to be with me, they were going to have to be pretty special to deal with all the, all the stuff that I had going on. So, but then I ran into a couple of friends and they were like, you know, I met my husband, fiance, whatever on Tinder and it can work. And David on the other end had the same situation where a cousin of his had met the man of her dreams on Tinder. And she's like, you need so both of us, you know, by fate happened to be on Tinder and met, and it was kind of, um, I don't want to say love at first sight, because that's, that's a strong statement. I think, you know, it takes a while to really build that, but I, we were, we were in pretty strong life right at the very, very beginning. And it developed very quickly into more. And he just, you know, he had stood by my side through everything. I mean, you know, he's seen me go through surgeries and, visits to the emergency room and, you know, other, other visits to the hospital for other procedures. And, you know, I mean, this is a man that, gosh, I mean, what, you know, when I couldn't even walk, I mean, he would help me out of bed and help me put my own clothes on when I couldn't get dressed by myself and mm -hmm. all the things that, you know, you, you know, you look at like a 90 year old couple and you think like, gosh, I really want that for myself one day, someone that's going to take care of me that way and be there by my side through sickness and health and, you know, whatever circumstances come our way. And that 100% has been David. And he's just, he's just my biggest cheerleader. 
So oh, that's such a beautiful story. And I do want my David and I've heard him on your podcast. He's been on her podcast. You have to go into her podcast and look it up. And there was actually one where I think you did talk about your relationship. I was so inspired. And there's also been another one uh, where you guys do question and answer where he's interviewing you. So he's sounds like such a kind, compassionate and of course he is caring and intelligent man. And you'll get to hear him for yourself if you go to her podcast and search some of her recent podcasts. So, and she's also got a beautiful son who graduated high school this year, right? And he, yeah. his name is Sean and he's been on the Dean list, right? It just recently. Yes. Thank you for noticing. Yes. yes. I'm so, so proud of him. He's just incredible. I mean, you know, he's had his share of issues too. I mean, I, I don't know. I always hesitate. Do I talk about this on podcasts, but you know, he's 18 now and you know, he, his father was abusive to both mm -hmm. me and him. So we went through a very challenging time and he's, you know, he's had a lot to deal with for his age and dealing with seeing his mother go through, you know, serious chronic illness. There were times when, you know, he'd watch me where I, I couldn't even breathe. And, you know, he was the one that had to make the phone call and, mm -hmm you know, he's had to help me through a lot, you know, and push my wheelchair. And when I was in a wheelchair and like all, you know, all these things. So he's, he's seen a lot and he's been through a lot, but, you know, I really, I really believe that these things are gifts because everything that he's gone through has made him so much stronger to deal with everything he's had to in this past year, 2020, you know, graduating. I feel so terrible for these, these kids that mm -hmm. were supposed to graduate high school in 2020. And that was, you know, he was one of them. He didn't get anything. He got no graduation. We drove through a parking lot. They handed mm. us the diploma and a $25 gift card to a restaurant. That was, that was all he got. Woo woo. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, but you know what? He didn't, he didn't complain about it and he mm -hmm. didn't, you know, he didn't act like, Oh, it's the end of the world. And I think that's because he's, he's seen much more challenging things than this. So I think when we go through certain things that are really tough, it prepares us to deal with things that for other people are extremely challenging and not to say, not to discount anything that this year has been, because certainly it's had its share of challenges for everybody. But I think that, you know, he's just so much more well-prepared to deal with it because of the journey that he's been on. Mm -hmm. And he makes me so proud every day. <laughs> and he's got a shining example in you as his mother and what he's had to go through to help protect you, you know, because he is your son and he does want to protect his mother. And uh, I did meet him when I came to Arizona and he was such a sweet soul. Like Aww. the energy that came off of him, just, he seemed very shy and quiet and just a really kind energy that just floated off him. Very sweet. Thank you. you. Did Thank you for noticing. I, I notice. I, I pick up on energy really, really fast. So yeah, I'm so happy. Is he still living at home with you or is he off at school? So that's an interesting story. So he is in college and we moved him into the dorm, meaning when I say we, David and I, and we had to set up his dorm room so cute and he was so excited. And three weeks into it, there were COVID patients quarantined next to him, around him, everywhere. And he just said, you know, mom, this isn't really very much fun. He couldn't leave his room. He couldn't mm -hmm. go anywhere that, you know, there was no social life and it was just, you know, and he didn't want to get COVID. So he, um, he's like, mom, can I come home? And I said, absolutely. Uh, of course, you know, so I got the gift of another year with my child at home. Aww. So he's been doing all <laughs> online school and still through all of this, he went, he managed to get on Dean's list and in the honors college, might I add. So, yeah. That's fantastic. Congratulations, Sean. <laughs> Thank you. I'll let him know that you said so. Well, that's fantastic. Um, so what are the most important lessons that you have learned going through going through all the pain and you know, people not understanding your illness and people not understanding you and going through all your different surgeries and staying positive and hopeful in coming to where you are now? What are your greatest lessons in all that? And what words of wisdom would you give to others who might be thinking that, oh, it's, you know, like they were saying, it's all over. <laughs> it's all mm -hmm. over. You got to live with this, you know, yeah. you'll never walk, you know, yeah. you'll never like live a normal life. What would you, what are your lessons that you learned and what would you tell somebody? So one of the things that I've learned is, 
and this is, you know, a, a Tony Robbins saying is that life is happening for you, not to you. And I think in so many situations, we get into that victim mindset of woe is me, poor me, all, why do all these things happen to me? And, you know, I actually have a, a former psychologist of mine say I was the sacrificial lamb because all of the, that was before all this chronic illness stuff. So, you know, it's like you, you can look at it and you can look at it as, you know, oh my gosh, poor me. Or you can say, you know what, all of these things that happen to me are such a gift because now I have the ability to see things through the eyes of somebody that's, you know, been through abuse and addiction and depression and anxiety and chronic illness and all kinds of things, you know, um, that's not even all of them, but, you know, just a myriad of experiences in my life. But now I get to take that and I get to use that to uplift other people and inspire other people to show them, that, yes, you can overcome these things. You don't have to be stuck in this. And it's, it's a matter of, you know, you've got to change your, your mindset from that mindset of victim to, you know, be, to be one of empowerment and really just not taking everything that you hear from doctors as the final word, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much more out there. There is so much powerful. There's our brains are so powerful. Mm -hmm. Our minds are so powerful. And if we simply, you know, really explore all of the, all of the different options out there and all the things we can do, we can heal so, so deeply. And the other thing that I've learned is when you're not living in alignment, that can make you really, truly sick. That can manifest as physical illness. And I lived my life for everybody but me. I was a total caretaker. I always wanted to make sure that everyone, everyone else was happy around me and everybody liked me and... I, you know, it was, it was always about everybody except for Bonnie. What does Bonnie want? You know, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to get my degree. I'm going to get my master's degree. I'm going to work in this really, you know, posh, fancy office so I can feel really important. And that's, that's what society tells you is success. I don't buy that anymore. Success to me is how many lives can I touch? How many people can I inspire? How many people now more than anything, how many people can I help to heal and to find hope? that they can heal. So, you know, it's really now that I'm living my life, you know, I'm not, I'm not stuck in an office all day. I go out in nature every day. I, you know, I'm co-coaching a, a course called master your mind an online course. And the first time we, we did that course, I got off the call and I just started crying mm -hmm. like happy, happy, happy tears, because I was like, this is where, exactly where I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I, this is, I, I know that I am living my purpose. I'm living in complete alignment right now with where I should be in my life. And that can cure so many illnesses, you know, just that living in alignment with who you're supposed mm -hmm. to be. So, so nice. much so. And that leads me to a spiritual practice. Now, spiritual practice doesn't have to be like God, it, you know, it's whatever you believe in. It's just something that takes you outside of that programming in your mind into believing in something higher than yourself, because like you were talking about our minds are so powerful if they're used correctly, like there's heart and brain coherence, and you can literally heal your body. There's work of Joe Dispenza that, you know, they've measured, it's measurable. It's, you know, they're putting it into science now, like literally we are more powerful than we can ever imagine. And it's just tapping into it and getting out of that monkey mind and getting an alignment is so important because it's like, you know, if you go into the chakras or your energy centers, lining those up, getting out into nature, connecting with something that's eternal and that has so much perfection and energy in it. Like literally we're, we're all part of that. We're all part of the whole and you can like heal yourself. I, think I could so. not agree more. And I'm a huge yeah. fan of Dr. Do Dispenza. Oh, I actually I have this. His, oh. I want to go to one of his uh, events. If you ever like, they're always sold out, especially now since because of COVID, he had to cancel so many of them. Like you go on and it's gone, but yep. you know, blind people are seeing and people that haven't walked for in years are walking. Like you can heal your body, especially when the collective you know, connect with that energy of the collective because we are all connected yes. and there's something greater than us. It doesn't have to be the man sitting in the sky with a beard and, you know, holding a Bible, but it's this quantum soup that we all are part of. And once you tap into that, 
and become part of that, we are just, it, there's, there's nothing we can't do. Pretty exactly. Incredible. <laughs> exactly. And I will see you at the event because I, I absolutely 100% will be there as soon as, you know, as soon as those open up again, mm-hmm. I'm going to be he there. Is. He is holding some like in Marcos Island. He did two in Florida and then he did one. I think there was one recent one in Cancun, but they're just like, you know, places where he can do them. He's doing them. In fact, um, Phoenix just did one. She did one, I think. In yes. Florida. Yeah. Phoenix Devereaux. I know. Yeah. I saw that. And she, oh, she was telling me actually before she went, she was telling me about how excited she was. And, and she was one that, you know, she had a, a major injury playing volleyball and mm-hmm. she was, you know, she was supposed to be on, on, uh, she was set to go to the Olympics for volleyball and then had to, that whole thing got nixed and she was unable to run for years. And after the Joe Dispenza that she was running on the beach. Yeah. That's such an amazing thing. An so amazing incredible. thing. So one more thing I want to talk about too, is, you know, all the work that you're doing and the lessons that you've learned, and now you're exactly where you believe you were led to be helping people and your podcast and all the work that you're doing. I have to just say that, you know, when I met Bonnie, you know, she was going through a lot of pain, but still being very positive. And it's our greatest pain that becomes our greatest teacher. And that's what we are here in life to do is to help other people overcome it and show that they're, you're not alone. You are not alone. And Bonnie, we were doing a lot of live videos would come on and she'd be in the greatest pain and she'd be feeling broken and she'd be crying. And, you know, just, she, she showed us all her courage to go through it. She showed us her raw vulnerability and it's so inspiring because that is what connects us. If you think you can't come on or help somebody or be live because you don't have it all together or you have to be perfect. That is not what connects us to each other. Perfection does not, you can't relate to it. But when you see someone going through the same thing that you felt isolated for or shameful about, that is the thing that bonds you to somebody else. And you know, who are you not to share your story with someone else because that exact story might help someone else. So I applaud you for everything that you have done and that you are doing and that you will continue doing for everybody now and for the future and for all. So I am totally inspired by you. So thank you. Thank you so much, Nancy. And that was, that was really beautifully said. I think there's so much truth to that. And there was a time in my life where I, I, there was no way I was going to go on video if, you know, every hair wasn't in place and every, you know, piece of mascara was not, you know, perfect, (laughs) (laughs) you know, perfect lipstick, all of it. And, and you're right. And I came on, like I look back at some of those videos and like, wow, that was pretty, mm, that was pretty rough. I mean, you know, in the hospital, no makeup, hysterically crying and, you know, but you're right. I mean, people need to see that to know that they're not alone. And that does, that does help people to, um, you know, I mean, they, they see, it's so easy to look at like an Instagram profile or something and think that this person is living a perfect life with all their perfect little pictures, but that's not what, that's not what people relate to. Like you said, I mean, that's, that's, it's so, it's so surface, you know, I mean, people want to know that other people are feeling the things that they're feeling. And that's, that's what allowed that gives them permission to open up about their pain. I can't tell you how many people have opened up to me about their deepest, darkest, you know, most horrible, painful situations because they've seen me do it. And that gives them a pass to do the same and to let them feel safe to do that. Mm -hmm. And showing that we are enough, just how we are with all our flaws, with whatever we deem damaged or whatever, we are enough. And we always are because we're all made perfect in God's eyes, the universe's eyes, whatever you want to call it. uh, We are perfect the way we are. And yeah, so (laughs) we're not damaged souls. We're, we're good. We're good. I agree. I have one more, one more thing to say about that. Actually, we just, we're talking about our mutual friend Phoenix mm-hmm. and she does this beautiful word art and she created oh, yes. a, yeah, she, it's so nice. She does. She created a picture for me. It says my best is enough. And I keep it to this day hanging on my wall to remind myself that, you know, not every day is perfect. I mean, you know, I, yes, I'm healing, but I still have days that are more challenging than others, but my best is enough. Whatever my best is for that given day or that given moment, that's enough. Mm -hmm. I don't need to push myself or pressure myself to feel that I'm, you know, not measuring up to some unrealistic standard. And that goes for everybody. Mm -hmm. 
I love it. My best is enough. Uh, well, I love this conversation. Um, I know we mentioned, you mentioned some of the, the programs and your podcast and some of the things that you're doing and that you're working on. Um, how can people find you and what are some things that you have coming up? What are some of your projects? I know you're doing speaking engagements, right? You're starting that, right? Yes. Well, yes. I've, you know, I've spoken on several podcasts and looking, you know, once I, once I'm able to get on live stages, I would love, love to do that. And um, yeah, I love speaking and I'm working on getting a coaching. Um, I'm working on my health coaching certificate right now. And I'm actually um, already co-coaching a program, like I said before, called Master Your Mind. It's all about, you know, uh, not just mindset, but it's, um, you know, we talk about brain rewiring and nutrition and trauma healing and inner child work and all of those things that, that I mentioned earlier that I went through. Now I'm helping co-coach a course with the person that coached me through it. So that's amazing and wonderful. And we've got a great group of girls involved in that right now. And I don't know when the next le uh, session of that will be opening, but at some point I will be uh, starting my own group courses and I do plan to start a Facebook group where I can give people, you know, not, not quite as an, inten of an intensive coaching, but to give, you know, little snippets here and I'll bring in specialists to, you know, do breath work healing and, you know, talk about the, um, the brain rewiring and EFT tapping. And I have, you know, I have like a bunch of people in my pocket that I can just call on to mm -hmm. that are great in these different areas that will come in and teach the group. So that is another initiative that I plan on doing going forward. And, um, and of course my podcast, which is the chronically courageous, and you can um, find me on Instagram at the chronically courageous. I may actually do a rebrand at some point because I feel like when I created that name, it was more from a victim mindset mm -hmm. of, you know, being in, stuck in chronic illness. And mm -hmm. now I want to do something that expresses more empowerment. So mm -hmm. I'm playing around with some different marketing ideas and some names and stuff to uh, better represent where, where I'm headed and where I am now. I love that. I love that you're recreating just from where you were a year ago to where you are now and the, and, you know, even the name of your podcast, how constantly evolving yourself, you're constantly changing and it's always a process and it's an evolution. You know, I think so many people are stuck in this victim mindset poor me, woe is me. And, and understandably so having been dealt this blow of these health issues, but really coming to a place that, you know, my happiness isn't outside of myself. It's not your fault. It's not that fault. It's, it's my, I have power. I am powerful. I can change my thoughts. I can change my health. I can do it. So it's taking it outside from away from out there into here. And that is where the empowerment is. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yeah. So two more questions before we go. Um, sure. I would love to hear maybe your top three books that have helped you that have helped you, you know, maybe have this positive mindset to have the trajectory forward, or maybe that helped you understand illness or what you had gone through before. Oh boy, this is tough. I've got to, you know, I'm such a I ha I, I'm an audio book girl more mm -hmm. than a, but a phys I have physical books, but usually they wind up sitting on my shelf for years and I wind up just giving in and getting the audio book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so audio like books. I love audio books and I love podcasts so mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. I love podcasts. So I'm actually going to pull up my, um, my audible list really quick here so I can refresh my memory. But but one, you know, that I mentioned before is su it's um, supernatural by jo Dr. Joe Dispenza, where he yes. talks the best oh. unbelievable book. I was like, holy Un mackerel that changed my life. Right. I mean, I'm right. reading. Oh yeah. What are you reading now? Well, I was into, um, breaking the habit of being yourself and I was committed mm. to that, but I've been thrown away. We're not going to get political, but I got thrown around with everything that's happening in the world, not just politics, but what's happening with COVID. I got thrown off that sure. and sure. I plan on just coming right back to it because it, yeah, going back to that work, Joe Dispenza's being becoming supernatural. So yes, I'm 100% there and breaking the habit of being yourself. So that's mm -hmm. <laughs> so number one. <laughs> well, and you know, you know, you talk about breaking the habit of being yourself. That's one thing that, you know, not to veer off too much from the, the question, but I feel like it's an important thing to mention that I, I've gotten so used to being in that victim mindset. And it was almost like, and just, and just, 
so much drama in my life that I feel like I was almost addicted. It took me a while to realize this, like what, why, why do you keep attracting so much drama into your life? And I, I don't, it was just like a magnet and it was just like, it would feed upon itself. And I feel like I, I had an addiction to the drama. Like I, I didn't, I functioned better if there was something to get like worked up about, you know, mm -hmm. like when I, I went through a 10 year court battle over my son and I mean, and there was something, you know, I, it's, it's embarrassing to admit it now in retrospect, but if I'm completely honest about it, I would get like, like this, this wave of excitement about, oh, now I get to go to court and I get to, you know, figure this out and fight and like, blah, blah. And it's, it was horrible and it sucked, but like, there was something about me that kept mm -hmm. just bringing all these, you know, to toxic work environment after toxic mm -hmm. work environment and just like crazy situations into my life. And um, and I, I think, you know, I really had to, you know, break the habit of being myself mm -hmm. and, and, you know, come into this new place where now I, I love, I love being peaceful. I love, I don't like the drama. I don't want the drama. And, you know, and, and even like, as far as, you know, the news and the political stuff, I, I try very hard not to immerse yeah. myself in that too much. I try to segregate myself from all of that because there's really nothing good or, you know, mm -hmm. what, you know, exciting about it. It's just, it's, it's really mm -hmm. a lot of negativity. So, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I have my moments where, you know, a few weeks ago I fell off the wagon and I was watching, you know, the Capitol riots and all that. Mm -hmm. And like, and, you know, and it was like, and I, I just, it, it made me almost like physically sick again. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why, why did I do that? What mm -hmm. was it that made me do that? But I, gave, I forgave myself and I got back on the wagon and, you know, got back into all my practices that I do, my meditation and my brain rewiring and my, you know, my time in nature and all those things to, you know, stay on a more, and you know, gratitude journaling and, all, you know, mm -hmm. stay on the more positive space because really what we surround ourselves and the people we surround ourselves with so impacts, you know, how, what we feel inside of our bodies and our souls. Mm -hmm. so. And absolutely, because it is it is an addiction and it's wearing something, you know, we're all like, the, it gives you a chemical response. It's an addictive nature. Like I can hear Joe going through all, yeah, it's true. all, the, body it's so true. all the body responses that happens. Literally it is like a chemical addiction. And, you know, I've talked about how I've stayed away from night um, mainstream news for a decade now. And I didn't know anything about anything in the world. I just didn't, didn't want to know. Now I'm going <laughs> to right. have to get back to just knowing enough and not digging into the rabbit hole, but it is mm -hmm. an addiction and they're feeding it. They're feeding it, feeding it, feeding it. And we could get into like, there's, there's so much. So it's good. It's you recognized it, how you were feeling and you took action to correct it. And that's just yeah. what you've got to do. And that's so, and a lot of people are just asleep to that and mm -hmm. running on automatic and not feeling good instead of like looking at what is, you know, what might be causing me to be like that. And then taking action steps to get yourself into a better place. So, yeah, I mean, what we, what we allow into our minds and our, and our energy field is everything. It just mm -hmm. it dramatically, dramatically impacts how we feel mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. So we, you know, there's a lot of people that say they, they don't like social media because it's so negative. And I say to that, well, then you're friends with the wrong people on social media, because when I go onto my social media, all I see is uplifting, positive, beautiful things. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's who you choose to, to let into your space. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the algorithms. <laughs> <laughs> well, and don't, the algorithms don't be scrolling through all that. So it's like, wow, like I, I right. used to tune into you, like when I was in the Facebook live challenge a lot. Like I would, I was off Facebook for a while because after Facebook politics, I was off, but I would tune in just to see y'all just to see beautiful Aww. Bonnie, just to see <laughs> all my like Steve Shinnon. I, you know, look at uh, Natalie, Natalie from Croatia, just these beautiful souls with hope and positivity. So I tune into them and just never scroll through that feed because I just didn't want to see what, what was going to come up next. So yeah, mm -hmm. social media. It's become a beast in itself, but then there's a lot of beautiful aspects to it. Like I, it connected me with you and so many other beautiful yes. souls. So, yes. you know, it's just like who you fill your space with and, and choose to fill your space with. So, right. And wait, I have to, I have to give you a little plug uh -huh. because you mentioned uh, Steve Chinnon and uh -huh. I know he was, he was on your podcast. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my favorite episodes. It was actually okay. two episodes. I think so it was a two parter. Yeah, because we kept going and going. <laughs> it was so much fun. So if you guys just want a nice, 
fun, a little sexy conversation. Um, that was a great, awesome yeah. conversation. It was so great. So yeah. I definitely recommend those episodes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, we had gone on, we we're going to just talk about the five love languages through, um, with, through the senses, but we got on and started talking about one thing and it just kind of let it lead. And then that went like 45 minutes. And I'm like, do you have time to, so we can touch on the love language? He's right. like, oh, yeah, I got it afternoon. So we recorded for like, I don't know, almost two hours. So I had to split wow. it. I split it into two sections and it worked out. That was out. great. Like, he's so fun to talk to. Oh it yeah. Was he's sexy. a great it was guy. Fun. It was fun. He's a great, great guy. Yeah, great guy. We've met good. some wonderful people together for sure. And that's, again, that's the social media, you know, mm-hmm. the social aspect of social media. Some of my friends that I've met through social media, I'm closer with than people that I've known for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of us never met. Right. I know, but we will. Well, we already met, but we will again. And I plan on meeting a lot more people later on in 2021. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we feel so like connected. Connected. Yeah. Yeah, It's wonderful. It's It's wonderful. Okay. So that was one book just quickly to others. Oh, let's see. Oh my gosh. I'm like blanking out, Nancy. I tell you, um, I'm a huge Brene Brown fan. I love, love, love. This is one of her earlier books, but the power of vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when I listened to that book, initially, I remember I was working in the big corporate office and like, I would purposely listen to positive uplifting audiobooks on the way into and out of work on my commute. And I remember listening to that one and thinking how amazing it was. And I, I was actually in marketing and I was responsible for hiring speakers too for our conferences. And we tried to get her, but she was booked out for like, I don't know, years. And of course she was insanely expensive too, but um, <clears throat> I think they would have they would have footed the bill if they could have gotten her within the time frame we needed her. But you know, the power of vulnerability is is so huge. And it's funny because I was when I read that, it resonated and yet. I didn't embody it the way I do now. Mm-hmm. I I still tried to maintain my perfectionist self. And now I am, now that that lesson is really something I embody. I, I am vulnerable. I am so fucking imperfect. And I guess we're gonna have to mark this episode explicit. And nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not gonna get tagged, but I'm keeping the full F U F bomb in there there you go um oh my god so funny all right and what else and so so a more recent one that I've really really enjoyed is um think like a monk by Jay Shetty it just really talks about those practices you know that you day to day to keep yourself peaceful and present and aligned and you know it's just I I think now more than ever with so many people kind of spiraling out of control these past couple of years with all the craziness we've had to deal with that is the book that I really, really recommend to kind of just bring you back to the basics of life and just, um, you know, keep on an even keel. That's a, a great book. Think like a monk. I actually, I think I might have started that. Maybe it was on audio. Um, I am going to add that to my list because after the craziness <laughs> of the last couple months, like mm-hmm. I am just going balls out. <laughs> back into my back into my practice that's right you gotta do it you gotta (laughs) lift yourself back up don't don't let them take you down oh yes 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 the awakening the great awakening was like "Ah!" (laughs) yeah it's been wild I actually um on December 21st the day when the the portal was supposed to be like wide Mm -hmm. open I participated in this channeling event where this you know this uh, girl that I know I've actually had her on my podcast her her podcast is called Christina the channel and she did a live channeling event mm. and it was so incredible and beautiful and I just I didn't expect going into it when I got out of it but I just heard all the messages I needed to hear uh-huh. about you know just like all these you know all these things about how you know people that were just you know ridiculed for so many years and and um you know, not, not accepted for who they are and blah, blah, blah. And like how, you know, we're all beautiful and we're all in this together. I, I can't even remember. I can't do it any justice what she did, but I, all I know is I was bawling. I was so mm. touched by everything that I heard and it was exactly what I needed to hear. So I, I really, that's the other thing is like going on this journey of healing has opened me up spiritually. You talked about spirituality a little bit before, and I'm, you know, I'm Jewish by religion, but I, I, 
I, and I follow Judaism. I do the traditions and stuff, but I don't consider myself like religious. I consider myself far more spiritual than religious. Um, it's really, you know, this whole going through this experience. I think when you go through something this challenging and come out the other side, it really opens up that spirituality aspect of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I've really started, you know, talking to my angels and, um, you know, of course the daily meditation, that's a no brainer, but, you know, opening up to things that I once thought were really weird. I mean, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm holding a crystal in my hand. So like, mm -hmm. good. There's, you Which know, there was that selenite or is it a crystal? This is rose quartz. Rose quartz. Oh, perfect. Heart energy. Yeah. I know. Isn't it pretty? I've got a few more here. So mm -hmm. good. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and I've just really um, started connecting with that. And I think it's just so empowering to, to like resign yourself to the, not, you know, like surrender to the fact that there is a power higher than you and you are being supported mm -hmm. and guided. And um, I've been told that, you know, my healing angels are, are all around me and very, very strong and powerful. And I believe that because mm -hmm. It's, it's nothing short of miraculous what's happened with my, my body and how it's healed. It's just incredible. So it's trusting and surrendering to it and allowing yourself to be a conduit towards all their beautiful healing, angelic energy, because we're all part of that and mm -hmm. we're living, breathing miracles and believing in that. And we are. And one last question I ask everybody is, what would you say is an awakened heart? I should have prepared for this because I know you asked that question at the end of your podcast. It's okay. What is an awakened heart? So I think an, an awakened heart is recognizing what your true purpose is in life and living that and, and truly going after that and living every day aligned with what what you believe your your true values and your purpose in life are because when you do that your heart does wake up i mean when when i do things that and i am now every day just doing things that are so aligned with my heart and you know and serving people is is very much aligned with my heart i i just i feel like i'm living a dream i mean the other night i actually i had david over and i don't we were watching the bachelor a silly you know silly show but then we started going through, there's this Instagram profile. It's called, I think it's called Good News Network or something or Good News Movement, Good News underscore movement. It's amazing. And we were just watching all these videos of just all these beautiful things in life. And, and I, you know, the tears started coming and, and then I just started, you know, and then I just like, once I, once it started, I couldn't turn it off. And I just looked at it and I just started crying and I'm like, God, I'm just so grateful for where I am in my life. I just, I feel like I'm living a dream. Like I, I, you know, just the fact that I'm able to do the things I'm able to do and help the people I'm able to help and live this life where that is so aligned with my values mm -hmm. and my purpose and being able to give back is so much more meaningful than, than, you know, than what I used to, you know, how I used to live my life, mm -hmm. which was completely, you know, aligned with what other people thought I should be doing, but so misaligned with what I believe to be my true purpose. Mm, and as you're saying that I can feel my heart connecting to yours, it's like, I feel it. And that is an awakened heart, beautifully said. And with that, Miss Bonnie, I am so happy that you joined us here. And I know you're going to help inspire so many people. And I will put all your information in the show notes. And um, folks, go find her, find her and be inspired. Thanks again, Bonnie. Thank you so much, Nancy. I love you. Bye. I love you too. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Awaken Heart Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, share it with a friend. And if you haven't already, head on over to your favorite podcast app to subscribe, rate, and review. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback, you can reach me at the awakenheartpodcast.com. 